Some of you have reached out to me with questions about some new things that are appearing on your recent IJS protocol. This is protocol feedback. This is a really big deal. Hi everyone, this is Amy. Welcome to my channel. Protocol feedback is an athlete-centered system that offers you more information to help facilitate your future improvement, goal assessment, and attaining those goals. Now you're gonna have even more information on your IJS protocol that can help you improve for your next competition. Before I get into how protocol feedback can do all these things, I wanna remind you that while I am a PSA ranked and rated coach, I'm not any kind of official spokesperson for US figure skating or the PSA. I'm a member just like you that pays very close attention to all the rules and painstakingly sorts through them to apply them with the skaters that I coach and to make videos like this for all of you. Always check with your own coach for further guidance. Okay, we've got all that out of the way. Let's get into protocol feedback. This is a new initiative that was launched this spring for juvenile through senior competitors in well-balanced events and excelled juvenile through senior when scored with IJS. It's used in all NQS events and national qualifying competitions where technical panels are employed. However, U.S. figure skating will not implement protocol feedback as sectional singles finals, U.S. figure skating championships, or the Excel series final. IJS protocols for the events indicated will offer you specific feedback for the step sequence in intermediate, for example. This is leveled and there will be a Y for yes and for no for rotations that will appear on your IJS protocol. The step sequence is leveled in novice, junior, and senior and the following notations will appear. Rotations, Y for yes and N for no. Body movement, Y for yes and for no. Clusters, Y for yes and for no. The order of appearance is rotations first, body second, and clusters will be listed last, as listed in ISU Communication 2558. For those of you that have competed in dance, it's gonna look very similar to the key points in dance. The final assigned level is also based on the turns achieved. You need five difficult turns for a level one, seven for a level two, nine for a level three, and 11 with complexity for a level four. Complexity means you must execute the difficult turns in both directions. You could see Y, Y, Y and still receive a level three if complexity is missing. The number of turns won't appear on the protocol feedback, but you can imply it at least within one or two turns, provided that you know the requirements for your level. The final level is a field of play call and cannot be subject to protest. Another benefit of protocol feedback is when it comes to spins for combination spins with and without a change of foot in juvenile, intermediate, novice, junior, and senior singles when a V is assigned due to a missing position. Protocol feedback will tell you exactly which position you missed. Do you see why I said this? is such a big deal? Yes. NC indicates missing camel position for no camel. And S indicates missing sit for no sit. And NU indicates a missing upright for no upright. This applies to the change combination spin, change foot combo spin, flying change combo spin, flying combo no change of foot, and combo no change of foot if the error relates to a missing position. Other errors may occur in the same spin, and the V may be applied for different reasons. You won't see an indication of that if it happens unrelated to the position. Again, the final level is a field of play call and is not subject to protest. When you look at your protocol, you're gonna see something like this. You can see that the step sequence level has key points. We have Y and Y. So that could not be awarded a level three. For the spin, we see CCOSP, 3V, with a missing upright position. How many times have you gotten a V on a spin and wondered why? As a coach, when you come to us and ask us, all we're able to say is, You're probably too high on a sit spin, trying to get lower next time. 
that would just be an assumption on our part. Now, yes. we know exactly why. This is really amazing. It makes it crystal clear and transparent. I give US Figure Skating and everyone that worked on this a round of applause to get this initiative to give us protocol feedback. Let's look at a few more examples for intermediate. This is not a complete list of everything you could see. These are only examples of what you could see. Here we have a step sequence base with the key points. Yes, this means the skater executed rotations in their step sequence, but did not achieve the minimum variety required to get above the base level. Now we have a step sequence that's been awarded a level one. For key points, there's an N in the rotations position, which means not executed. Here, another level one with a yes for key points. That would mean they performed the rotations, but did not execute the seven difficult turns required to get higher than a level one. This next example is a maximum level for intermediate singles. Level two, step sequence, with a yes for the key point of rotations achieved. You can fulfill the key points, but if you don't execute the number of turns required for the level, you will not achieve that level. Let's look at some examples for novice. Here's the step sequence, level two. The key points are yes, no, no. Next is a step sequence, level three. Yes, yes, no. Rotations and body achieved, but no clusters. Step sequence, level three. Yes, Yes for rotations, no for body movement, yes for clusters. Step sequence level four, yes, yes, yes. When you achieve a level four, you will see all those whys because you must have 11 difficult turns. The numbers all go to 11. Now, let's look at some spin examples. Here we have a level three flying change combination spin with a V for no camel position. Here's a flying change combination spin, level three with a V for no sit position and a combination with a change of foot with a V for no upright. So tell me, what do you think of protocol feedback? Do you think it's gonna help you? Leave me a comment down below and let me know. And if you've received protocol feedback, please let me know what you think of it and if it helps you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like and share it with somebody else you think it could help. Just post it to your social media too. I have upcoming videos on other topics that can help you with your skating progress this season. So be sure to subscribe and ring that bell so that you never miss a video. If you missed any of my videos about the new program requirements for 23-24, you can click right here to watch that. Here's my video on testing and competition rules. This is Amy. Happy skating. Thank you for watching. I will see you real soon. Bye.